So you've tried sprinting with a ball, sometimes absolutely nailing the technique, but oftentimes, It's frustrating for you and of course your teammates. <coughs> Either losing control of the ball and turning over possession, not getting up to full speed and making you an easy target for defenders, or just running out of play altogether. So of course you stop trying to run the ball, stick to short passes, got that down. Work on your long range pings to add variety, got that down too. But you're running, it's still off. Well, now might be the time to address the issue. And in today's video, we'll discuss some of the elements that it takes to be able to sprint with the ball. From using the soft parts of your boot, to the importance of the knee drive, contact area of the ball to keep it moving, how to stop, how to change direction, when to change direction, getting going, looking up, arm, balance, speed. 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 Okay, there's a lot to uncover, but the good news is, it's actually quite simple. And if you can run, well then you're gonna get this down. It's just gonna take some practice and three simple steps. See? It's not that bad. So first up, the getting started, or the instigation of the sprint. Whether that's from a pass into your feet, you're running onto the ball, or you're starting from a stationary position. This getting started, or first touch if you will, should always be delicate, but intentional. This will set the tone for the next steps of getting up to speed. Too soft of a touch and you'll kind of stall to start. Too heavy of a touch and it may be intercepted. And this is where the intentional part comes into the equation. When dribbling at speed, it's important to keep the ball in your area of control so that you have the ability to control the ball and change its course if need be. So when you're instigating the sprint, you'll need to have a level of awareness as to the space you're looking to penetrate. If you have a ton of space to move into, well then the first or instigating touch to get you up to speed can be further out in front, giving you space to open up your legs before having to take the next touch. If there's a defender in between you and the space, well then that instigating touch needs to be more delicate so that the ball remains closer, but far enough away so that you're able to get up to full speed if the opportunity allows. So to be delicate and intentional means to use the soft parts of your foot to have the greatest control, using either the wide surface area of the instep or the soft outside strip to the side of your laces to instigate the movement. And regardless of which one you use to get underway, a good rule of thumb is to bend the kicking legs so that when you make contact, the knee is over the top of the ball, not only resulting in a delicate but intentional touch into the space, but also ensuring your posture is leaning forwards to instigate the sprint. Next up, the acceleration. So we've established that instigating touch, but we need to continue through that acceleration, and that comes from the standing leg. You can see that as I go to make contact with the ball, my standing leg is already at work, kicking back to provide thrust to my sprint. It's the same reason that all sprinters, whether you're starting from a block or from standing, that there's always one leg to provide the necessary power to accelerate. And the good news is that for the most part, this happens automatically. So why this is an important step to mention is because whilst we have these mechanics built in, some of us lack the coordination that comes naturally to others. As we talked about, it's built in. We just need to know how to activate it. And by readying yourself with soft knees and by being on your toes, this will create a clearer path of communication between your brain and your legs, saying that it's go time, making it easier to apply the technique instead of that awkward timing issue from being flat-footed that you might be familiar with. Number three, maintaining speed. All right, so we've delicately moved the ball into the space to instigate the sprint. We've also, at the same time, pushed off of our standing leg to power through. Now we're underway and getting up to speed. We need to be as efficient as possible to maintain that pace. And how we do so is using the very outside of our dribbling foot, pushing through the very backside of the ball to keep it traveling in that direction, which is forward. Too low and it will cause the ball to bobble and bounce, and too high and you risk falling over the ball. <laughs> Why the outside of your foot? It's because it plays into our ankle's capabilities, allowing us to maintain a natural sprinting posture, keeping our knee driving forwards. Whereas using the inside, it causes our hips to open and in turn shifts the knee off center, slowing down the dribble. This is not to say that the inside isn't used. It's very useful and can be seen more when changing ball direction through defenders, or if the ball gets outside the line and you need to reel it back in. But we'll get into ball direction in just a sec. Okay, back to the outside. Keeping the ball out in front of you, less of the knee over the top of the ball on contact, like we would see in the acceleration. Instead, you'll want to time the contact to take place on the way down to plant in your foot. So the knee will sort of be in line with the back of the ball when you touch the ball. 
still with a bent leg to be as delicate as possible. Then it's a case of repeating the technique again and again with each stride. Okay, so we've nailed all three points. The last thing to mention is shifting the ball in a variety of directions and stopping. And well, if dribbling with the ball in a straight line is pushing through the back of the ball, well then changing directions, slowing down and stopping means that we just have to make contact with the ball in different spots to keep it from traveling forwards. And that is it in its most basic form. But to zoom in further, when we're shifting direction to dribble through cones or people, the goal is to now contact the ball on the sides to keep it from getting away, shifting it out of reach of the opposition. Otherwise, the ball moves forwards and you lose the ball. Okay, wait. This is more than just touching the ball, it's also about balance and body position. The best players at changing direction ensure they get their body weight over to that side of the ball they make contact with so that they can push off and change direction with the ball and maintain possession. This is perhaps more emphasized when stopping and looking to change direction completely. The goal is to not just contact the ball on the far side to stop it moving, but to also get your body weight over the ball so that you can remain in close proximity before returning to the ball ready for the next Salah, opportunity. He would do it again, would he? Mo Salah has so you can now dribble at pace, you can change direction and even stop. But what exercises can you do to really enhance this part of your game? Well, I've put together a bunch of drills that you can do the next time you're at the field to really tap into all of the elements that we just spoke about. And you can watch that here. If it's not quite popping up just yet, then that means it's not quite ready. So in the meantime, you should probably go and watch the dribbling around cones video to really give you a step up on your competition for when this video is ready. So. Uh, I'll see you there or I'll see you there. Cheers for watching. Thank you.